So what if I told you guys that four days ago, I was in the Himalayas with four of my best friends. We were on a mission to climb up to the very peak of Mount Everest. And we did, and it was awesome. And three days ago, I was in Tokyo, Japan. Beautiful city, very modern, very technological, nothing like Egypt, amazing sushi. I love sushi. And two days ago, I was in Germany, Berlin, in 1989. I was witnessing the downtaking of the Berlin Wall, symbolization of democracy bringing people together. And yesterday, I was in France, Paris, with my babe, Angelina Jolie. Beautiful woman, beautiful place, amazing. And tonight, well, tonight I can do whatever I want. In fact, we can all do whatever we want to. Go anywhere, meet anyone, discover new places. Now, by now, you're probably thinking, this guy's insane, what is he talking about? You know, that these things cost money, they take time, responsibility. But no, they don't. I'm here to tell you that we're all able to do this with this skill we all possess. It all started when I was 10 years old. I had a nightmare on a Friday morning. I was being chased down an icy road by zombies, wolves, all sorts of terrifying creatures when I tripped and I fell. I hit my head and I looked up at the zombie. I remember this image very clearly. The zombie's jaw was dislocated and it was oozing out blood and pus and it went on my leg. It was terrifying. Two things happened. I peed my pants. And the second thing is my mind started to catch on that this didn't make any sense. First of all, I was in my bed like an hour ago. Why am, I, why am I now being chased down this road? Second of all, I did nothing to aggravate the zombies. I am 10 years old. Why would zombies be chasing me? Third of all, and this is the most important one, zombies don't exist. So this questioning of the le uh, legitimacy of my situation made something happen. Stay with me here. It made me wake up, but I was not in my bed. I was not in my room. I was in my dream. Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> I was there, lying on the ground, looking up at the zombie, feeling the texture of the rough Egyptian street on my skin. And it was real. It was as real as this moment right now. And I was staring dead, dead straight into the zombie's eyes. And I only thought of one thing. Why am I scared? I'm in no real danger. I could wake up whenever I want to. And I woke up and I was back in my bed, all warm and comfy, with my Pokemon sheets on. I got up and I went to my dad and said, hey, I had this dream today. I was being chased by zombies and stuff and I woke up into the dream. And he looked at me like, my son is 10 years old and he's already taking drugs. What are you doing? <laughs> so I just disregarded the dream. Now it's 2013. I'm 16 years old, six years has passed. And uh, one day, my friend comes up to me and he says, dude, I had this weird dream last night. And I tell him, what was it about? And he says that in the dream, in his dream, I told him he was dreaming. And that made him wake up. So I told him, Rami, I know what you're talking about. I had that exact same dream when I was 10. And so we got to thinking, we were really curious about what this was. And we wanted to know. So I went home that night. I did some Google research. Ch -ch 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 and I found out this plethora of information about dreams and sleep and brains in general. First of all, I found out that we all dream three to five times a night. If you, if you think you don't dream, you just don't remember your dreams. We all dream without exception. Second of all, and this is amazing, I found out that we function at 60 to 70% brain power in our sleep. Right now, we're functioning at five to 10%. In our sleep, we're functioning at 60 to 70. That's almost 10 times the amount of brain power. Imagine what you can do in dreams when you're functioning at that higher capacity. And most importantly, I found out that this thing where you wake up into a dream where you're in control of your surroundings, it's called a lucid dream, a lucid experience. So I got curious, I got excited. I wanted to know how to do this and I found out how through the internet. So I went out. I bought myself a notebook and I put it beside my bed and every single day I would wake up and write all of my dreams down in that notebook. So at first I could only remember like a color of a wall or a sound. 
But then as the days progressed, my dream memory got so much stronger. I started to remember dialogues and conversations and scenarios and places I've never been before, and I wrote it all down in my dream journal. Now, at this point, I had to do something called reality checks. These are things that question whether or not you're awake in your waking life. I am not insane, stay with me. Uh, the most common one is pinching yourself. This is in all the movies, pinch me, I'm dreaming. When you pinch yourself, you know that you're not dreaming because you feel pain. In the dream, your pain receptors, they're inhibited. You don't feel any pain in dreams. So, the most common reality check is pinching yourself. When you do this 60 to 70 times a day, two things happen. First of all, your friends think you're insane. Second of all, your brain gets accustomed to it. It becomes second nature. So, if you do this all the time when you're on, when you're on the bus, when you're in school, your brain will do it automatically when you're dreaming. But there's one difference. In the dream, when you pinch yourself, you won't feel any pain. And that will signal you. It will tell you that you're not dreaming anymore. Uh, you're not awake, sorry. And that invokes lucidity. So I kept doing my reality checks. I kept writing down my dreams. And soon enough, it happened. I had my first lucid dream. I want to share that with you guys. So in the dream, I was in front of my old house in Shrut. And I had two people with me. Nadine Hassanin and Rami Hassanin. They're brother and sister. So, Nadine was doing something to me in that dream that she constantly does to all of us. She is a master at this. She does it like no other. She has a PhD in this act. She was nagging the living hell out of me. I was being nagged so hard. I wanted to wake up from how much I was being nagged. She managed to get into my head and even nag me in my sleep. So, in real life, when people nag you, you register negative thoughts like, go away, I don't want to be with you anymore, shut up, shut up. But in the dream, when you get annoyed or you think negatively, your, re, uh, your surroundings respond to that. If you think positively, your surroundings will also respond positively. So when Nadine was nagging the hell out of me, she caught on fire. <laughs> She literally burst up into flames, I swear to God. <laughs> and uh, I was standing there looking at my on-fire friend that didn't move a muscle, by the way. She was like this. And her brother, her loving, caring sibling, also was like this. <laughs> and I looked at her and something was not right. First of all, people don't just catch on fire in real life. Second of all, when people catch on fire, they should run or scream or panic. She didn't. She just stood there. And her brother also didn't care at all that his sister was on fire, but that's normal. I would expect that anyways. So it happened again. I woke up in my dream, similar to what had happened when I was 10 years old. But this time, I could stand here for 10 days, not 10 minutes, 10 days, and try to explain how mind-blowing this moment is. I would fail. It is breathtaking. It's insane how much this moment just puts you in a state of, oh. First of all, everything around you gets like 50 times clearer. The ground that was once this gray haze of nothingness was now this intricate painting of gray and black and white dots. I could feel the warmth of the sun on my skin. I could hear the birds chirping. I could feel my weight, gravity's effect on me. And I was being burnt by Nadine. And then I was awake, but I panicked. I didn't know what to do. It was too good. I was standing there, and she looked so real. She looked like she was actually on fire. My friend is on fire. What do I do? I panicked, and we all know what happens when you panic in a dream. You wake up. And I woke up, and I slapped myself because I was very disappointed. I wanted to do so much. I wanted to talk to them. I wanted to explore the neighborhood. I wanted to know what my subconscious had to offer me. Because when you talk to dream characters, you're not talking to these actual people. You're actually talking to your subconscious, yourself. You're discovering this other part of you that you never knew existed. I think that's amazing. So I woke up, I called Rami, and I said, hey, I had the lucid dream. And he's like, really? What was it about? I said, well, you were there, and Nadine was there, and she was on fire, and you didn't care, she didn't care, no one cared. And that's it, I woke up. And he said, that's it? I said, yes, but it was breathtaking nonetheless. 
So I got even more interested. I wanted to have more lucid dreams. Once you go lucid, you never go back. So I went on Google again, and I found this website called dreamviews.com. Now, on Dreamviews, people share their lucid dreams. There are about 10 million lucid dreamers on Dreamviews. It's an amazing website. So I thought my lucid dream was cool, where I just stood there looking at my on-fire friend. My lucid dream was nothing compared to what these people share. There's this one guy. He's a lead guitarist for a band called Between the Buried and Me. He actually goes into a subconscious and asks it for music. He goes and asks some random guy on the street, hey, write me some music. I want to hear some music from you. And his brain, which is working at 70% brain power, remember that, writes him music, fully original. And he wakes up, he remembers that music, and he records it, and he sells it to the world. I've heard it. It is beautiful music. It's amazing. There's this other guy. Actually, no, 10,000 lucid dreamers. It's a group. It's a group on the website. They use their lucid dreaming to lose weight. Yes, they, they lucid dream to eat Nutella, Kentucky, McDonald's, Pizza Hut, 50,000 Whoppers if they want to, because you never get full. It's all about the taste. And then when they wake up, they don't have the cravings anymore. They don't want to eat that stuff. They had enough. And I think that's brilliant. Uh, a previous uh, Haya graduate, Fatemo, she uses lucid dreaming to uh, review her classes, review her lectures, uh, to re relive the classes. Now, I think that's a bit lame. <laughs> when you have the ability to go to the moon and fly anywhere and go swim with whales and stuff, and you choose to study. <laughs> What's up, Fatou? So, my point is, lucid dreaming, it enables us into this world where we can do anything, literally anything is possible. This world right now, this physical world, we're limited by so much time, money, uh, responsibilities, parents, physics. I can't just fly right now. Gravity. But in a lucid dream, you're not limited by anything. You're only limited by your imagination. Let me repeat that for emphasis. You're only limited by how crazy your mind is. Whatever your mind can reach out and grasp, that's how far you can go in a lucid dream. If you're crazy enough to imagine unicorns and dragons fighting each other in this other planet with oceans and things that we've never even seen before, you can. It all depends on you. And what does this take? What does this ability take to accomplish? Pen and paper, a book, a notebook and the, ability, the will, the effort to lucid dream. That's all it takes. I have this friend who always quotes this quote. If there's a will, there's a way. Very cheesy, but true nonetheless. The pen and paper, the will, the effort, the conscious decision to want to lucid dream, and you have it. You possess the key into tapping your subconscious in a way you never thought possible before. Thank you.